Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Monday Night Raw Review. My Night Raw tonight was from the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, Missouri. And tonight was the last night of the 2024 WWE Draft. Of course, the first night of the draft took place on SmackDown this past Friday. And my Night Raw tonight, this show sucked. This show was absolutely dreadful. And the draft also sucked tonight. This this draft for this year, it was absolutely awful. About 95% of the superstars stays on their brand. And 50% got drafted. Yes, yeah, some new change. Some new era, right? You know, the more things change, the more things stay the same. And that's what we got with this draft. But tonight on Monday Night Raw, we had Gunther versus Xavier Woods. We had Sami Zayn versus Bronson Reed for the Intercontinental Championship. Cancel Ray took on Maxine Dupree. Why are they still pushing Maxine Dupree? I don't know. And we had Liv Morgan versus Nia Jax. We had the Raw Tag Team Championship on the line where Awesome Truth, R Truth, and The Miz defend the titles against the Kiritazawa and Otis. And the main event, we had a six man tag Ricochet, Andrade, and Jey Uso versus Finn Balor, Damian Priest, and JD McDonough. Yeah, this was your card for Monday Night Raw tonight. Can you believe it? Gunther versus Xavier Woods. We've seen this how many times in, you know, different uh, variations. You know, with New Day versus Imperium. And then, oh, you have Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston versus Vinci and Kaiser. Or we have Xavier Woods and Kofi versus Gunther and uh, Ludwig Kaiser. You know, it's the same old shit. My Night Raw tonight, dreadful show this was. Absolutely awful. And also, this was the go-home show for Backlash, which is this Saturday. Which, of course, is going to be in France. And this didn't even feel like a go-home show. You know, of course. I completely forgot Backlash was this Saturday. But... Before I get into the review, I want to go over the uh, the supplemental uh, draft picks uh, from uh, Friday after SmackDown went off the air. So these were the uh, supplemental uh, draft picks, you know, for night one after SmackDown went off the air. So we had Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. They are going to Monday Night Raw. Baron Corbin got drafted to SmackDown. Why? We should have had, you know, Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker both go to SmackDown, but unfortunately, they end up drafting Braun to Monday Night Raw. And when Corbin and Braun were down in NXT, they were a pretty good tag team down there. You know, they were interesting. But now, since Braun Breaker was drafted to Monday Night Raw, and Baron Corbin's going to SmackDown, be ready for Baron Corbin to be absolutely boring again. Get ready to change the channel when Baron Corbin comes on TV, on SmackDown. And we have Cedric Alexander and Ashante Adonis. They are staying on SmackDown. We have Ivar staying on Monday Night Raw. Shayna Baszler staying on Monday Night Raw. The OC, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, and Mia Yim staying on SmackDown. And Zoe Stark staying on Monday Night Raw. Awful. Not even surprised by any of these. None whatsoever. But those were the 
uh, supplemental draft picks uh, on night one after SmackDown went off the air this past Friday. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. My Night Raw opened up tonight with Logan Paul, the United States Champion. He ended up coming out of a vehicle along with I Show Speed and Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. So they end up coming out of the vehicle. Of course, Logan Paul has his prime drink in his hand. So the Judgment Day. They walked up to Logan Paul, I Show Speed, and Patrick Mahomes. Damian Priest ended up mentioning that the United States Championship looks good on Logan Paul. So Logan Paul ended up saying that the Judgment Day is doing a great job. He ended up saying that Damian Priest will destroy Jey Uso this Saturday at Backlash. So this brought all these guys walking into the T-Mobile Center together, and pretty much that was basically that. And then we went into the arena, and we saw Michael Cole and Pat McAfee. They had mics in hand, and... They end up welcoming us to Monday Night Raw. Michael Cole ended up saying that tonight, the show will be shaken up. No, it wouldn't be because almost all of the superstars on the roster were staying on the show. So Pat McAfee ended up talking about how Roman Reigns withdrew his name from the draft. And he acknowledges uh, Roman for giving younger stars a chance. So, of course, they end up running down the results of the first night of the draft from SmackDown. Of course, all champions are protected on their respective shows, so they wouldn't be drafted, you know, to either Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. And we saw, of course, a shot of the Raw and SmackDown draft war rooms, which the, raw, the war rooms look absolutely laughable, in my opinion. I mean, do, do they really need war rooms just to, you know, when they uh, draft somebody, go, hey, we got them, we finally got them. Do we really need to see that? And then, of course, we saw a shot of the NXT arena down there in Orlando. You had all the fans there and all the performers watching. So we end up seeing that. And so Becky Lynch ended up kicking off the show. The Women's World Champion, Becky Lynch, made her way to the ring, got a big ovation from the crowd there. Becky got on the mic. She had seen that the man has come around to Kansas City. She wanted to say that she has some history in Kansas City. And she had saying that a lot of people say this is where the man was born. She had saying nearly six years ago, she stood up on the steps with a bloodied face and let everyone know that this was her show now. Of course, that was when Nia Jax ended up bloodying up uh, Becky's face. And that was before Survivor Series. So, Becky ended up saying that she's the new Women's World Champion six years later, and is still saying the same damn thing. So, we had the crowd end up chanting for Becky. Becky ended up saying that we are on night two of the WWE draft. She ended up saying that the times are changing, and we have a whole new division waiting in the wings. Becky wanted to say that it has taken her two years to get back to holding a world championship. Becky ended up saying that she loves the fans as the crowd was chanting to Becky, you deserve it. She ended up saying now that she is holding the title, her instinct is to hold it tight and never let it go. She ended up saying that championships are meant for holding. They're meant for defending. So Becky went on to say that she needs to find a new number one contender. And Becky ended up saying that she wants to fight the best. And this brought out Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan ended up coming out. 
She got on the mic. She ended up saying that if Becky is looking for a new number one contender, she is here. So the crowd ended up chanting for Mommy. So the fans are really missing Rhea Ripley. Liv Morgan got in the ring. She ended up saying that the very last thing she wanted was for Becky to hand her a title opportunity. But Becky owes her one. She ended up saying that the truth is that the only reason Becky won the Women's World Championship was that Liv Morgan did what Becky couldn't do at WrestleMania. And that was to take out Rhea Ripley. She ended up saying that this is the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour. And Liv Morgan is still going on this, you know, her revenge tour. She ended up saying that they both know that the end game is always going to be her. So Liv Morgan ended up saying that she won't stop until she has everything she wants. Until she wants that Women's World Championship. So Becky ended up saying to Liv Morgan that she is right. And that she wouldn't be holding the title if not for what Liv Morgan did to Rhea Ripley. She ended up saying that the interesting thing is that Liv Morgan would be holding the title if not for what Becky Lynch did to her. So Nia Jax ended up coming out. Of course, Nia Jax was drafted to SmackDown this past Friday because, you know, the rosters, you know, the new rosters don't go into effect until next Monday. So next Monday is when the uh, new uh, rosters go into effect, you know, for the superstars that were drafted. So the crowd ended up loudly booing at Nia Jax. So Nia Jax got Nia Jax got on the mic. She ended up saying that Kansas City is extremely rude for not welcoming the irresistible force into their homes. Of course, nobody there wanted to see Nia Jax. So Nia Jax ended up saying that they're lucky she showed up. She ended up saying that she dominated uh, both Becky and Liv Morgan last week. And that she should be the champion. She ended up saying that the only reason she isn't champion is because Becky and Liv Morgan teamed up to make sure she wouldn't be. So, Nia Jax ended up mentioning that she got drafted to SmackDown. And she pointed out that she is wearing blue tonight. Because, of course, SmackDown is, you know, the blue color. The blue color. So, Nia Jax ended up saying that she will soon be champion. So, she's not worried. Yeah, think again, Nia Jax. So Nia Jax then got on the ring apron, which, oh my god, like, this whole promo from Nia Jax was absolutely fucking awful. So she ended up saying tonight is her last night on Monday Night Raw, which got a good ovation from the crowd there. So Nia Jax ended up saying that if she's leaving, she's taking one of them with her. So Liv Morgan then drop kicked Nia Jax as she got into the ring. So Liv Morgan ended up saying that if Nia Jax is going to make a challenge, she accepts. So pretty much that was basically how this segment ended. So that's how we got Liv Morgan versus Nia Jax later on in the night. What an awful way to open my Night Raw tonight. This whole segment was absolutely cringe, awful, dreadful. Nia Jax was just Awful on the mic. God, what an awful way to open the show. And then, as My Night Raw came back from the commercial, we had round one of the 2024 WWE draft. We had the first picks. So, Stephanie McMahon ended up making her way out to the stage. Good to see Stephanie McMahon. So Stephanie ended up saying that it's great to be back in Kansas City. Stephanie ended up welcoming everyone to night two of the draft. So she announced the first pick. And the first pick was for My Night Raw. So she ended up announcing that My Night Raw selected the ring general, Gunther, and Ludwig Kaiser. So, Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser are staying on My Night Raw. Of course, Giovanni Vinci is no longer part of Imperium. 
you know, of what we saw last week. So then Stephanie ended up saying, a storm is coming to SmackDown. She up announcing that SmackDown selected Jay Cargill. And then we see the SmackDown War Room. They're celebrating. Hey, we got Jay Cargill. She's staying on SmackDown. Yay. Yeah, so the War Room was in excitement for Jay Cargill. So then she ended up announcing the third pick. She ended up saying that Raw selects Damage Control, EL Sky, Asuka, Kairi Sane, and Dakota Kai. So Damage Control is going to Monday Night Raw. And, of course, the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka, Kairi Sane, hold the Women's Tag Team Championship, which the title can be defended on all shows. And then Stephanie ended up announcing that the final pick of the first round, SmackDown selected Kevin Owens. So there you go. Those were your first round uh, picks in uh, the draft here on My Night Raw. No surprise with any of these. And then we had the first match of the night. Gunther versus Xavier Woods. Of course, Gunther was accompanied by Ludwig Kaiser. Xavier Woods accompanied by Kofi Kingston. And this was a good match here, but it's the same old shit. You know, how many variations have we seen of Imperium versus uh, New Day? You know, Ludwig Kaiser, Giovanni Vinci versus Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, or Kaiser versus Kofi Kingston, Kaiser versus Xavier Woods, Vinci versus Xavier Woods, Vinci versus uh, Kofi Kingston, Gunther versus Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. You know, we've seen this match a lot of times before. So, match ended up getting on the way. Woods ended up circling Gunther. Gunther then ended up kicking Woods in his midsection. Gunther ended up getting uh, Woods in the corner. He ended up going for a chop. Woods ducked the chop. Woods ended up chopping Gunther's chest. He ended up ducking a second chop from Gunther and applied a side headlock. Gunther ended up whipping Woods off, but Woods was able to avoid a flurry of offense. He ended up pinning uh, Gunther. He ended up pulling the top rope down to get Gunther out of the ring. Woods ended up going for a slingshot baseball slide, but Gunther avoided that. And Gunther then ended up chopping Woods down on the floor. And then My Night Raw went to commercial. Then when My Night Raw came back from the commercial, Gunther was standing over Xavier Woods. Gunther ended up pulling Woods to his feet, and he ended up uppercutting him. Woods kicked Gunther back, ended up hitting an uppercut to Gunther. Gunther ended up scooping Woods up and slammed him down to the canvas. Gunther ended up stepping over Woods and ended up attacking Woods' back. So, Gunther started taunting the crowd. And we saw a graphic appear. Of course, you know, WWE has been doing this with a graphic appearing, the uh, QR code. This is all for, you know, Uncle Howdy coming in, you know, Bo Dallas, you know, possibly forming a new Wyatt family. So Woods ended up chopping back at Gunther. Gunther ended up laying Woods out with a shot. Xavier Woods ended up getting to his feet. He ended up chopping Gunther's back. But Gunther shoved Woods to the corner and ended up chopping Woods twice. That first chop echoed loudly throughout the arena. And then Gunther ended up hitting a short arm lariat to Woods. So Gunther turned toward Kofi. And Gunther was talking some trash to Kofi. Woods ended up hitting Gunther in his midsection. And Woods connected with a jawbreaker. Woods then chopped uh, Gunther, but Gunther ended up cutting Woods off. He ended up attempting a power bomb to Woods, but Woods countered and landed on his feet. Gunther ended up dropping Woods on the apron, ended up stunning him with a chop to his chest. Gunther ended up climbing to the second rope. He ended up grabbing Woods on the apron. Gunther pulled Woods up to the second turnbuckle, and he started fighting Gunther off with some punches that knocked Gunther down to the canvas. 
Woods ended up coming off the top rope with a missile drop kick, and he ended up going for the cover. Gunther kicked out. We had Woods end up grabbing Gunther for a suplex, but Gunther blocked it. Gunther then ended up chopping Woods down. Woods ended up rolling to the apron. Gunther ended up charging at Woods, but Woods shouldered him. Gunther ended up knocking Woods down. Woods' leg ended up getting caught in the middle and bottom rope. So that led to Gunther kicking away at Woods, and he ended up kicking away at uh, Woods' leg that was caught in the middle and bottom rope, and he ended up chopping Woods' leg. So the ref ended up helping Woods out of the uh, middle and bottom rope, and Woods ended up falling to the floor, and then My Night Raw went to commercial. Then when My Night Raw came back from the commercial, Gunther was concentrating on Woods' uh, leg that got caught in the middle and bottom rope. Woods tried to fight back, but Gunther ended up scoop slamming Woods with his leg hitting the ropes. Gunther ended up powering Woods up to the top rope, and it got him caught into the tree of woe. So Gunther ended up attacking the right leg, and Woods was right in pain. Ref ended up checking on Woods, but Woods ended up telling the ref, you know, I want to continue the match. So Woods ended up getting to his knees. Gunther ended up easily chopping Woods down. So Gunther ended up heading to the apron. He went to the top rope. He ended up going for a flying splash on Woods, but Woods got his knees up. So at the end of the match, we had uh, Gunther end up uh, maintaining his grip on Woods. He applied a STF in the center of the ring. And Xavier Woods was trying to make it to the bottom rope so that, you know, the STF could be broken up. But Gunther ended up pulling Woods back. So Woods had no choice but to tap out. So Gunther ended up winning the match. Overall, this was a good match here between Gunther and Xavier Woods. But, you know, it's the same old. How many vari variations of, you know, Imperium and New Day have we seen, you know, with Gunther and Kaiser, Vinci, and Xavier Woods and Kofi? And then we saw Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly was backstage with Jey Uso. Kathy Kelly ended up asking Jay if he feels any pressure being a first-round draft pick to Monday Night Raw. Jay ended up saying to Kathy Kelly that you can put all the pressure on him. He ended up saying that Backlash, Damian Priest will catch a yeet down. So then Kathy Kelly ended up asking Jay about Logan Paul. So Jay ended up saying that he's glad that they signed a, you know, Paul brother. He ended up saying that he just wishes it was the one with the winning record. Yeet. So pretty much that was basically what Jay Uso had to say. And then we had round two of the draft. We had Logan Paul and I Show Speed come out to the stage. The crowd was loudly, loudly booing them. So Logan Paul ended up telling Samantha Irvin to introduce Patrick Mahomes, to which he was shown sitting at ringside. He ended up getting a massive ovation because, of course, he's on the Kansas City Chiefs. So Samantha Irvin ended up introducing Patrick Mahomes. So I Show Speed ran over Logan Paul with the first pick. So we ended up saying that Raw selects the voice of the voiceless, CM Punk. So the war, the Raw War Room was celebrating, you know, that we got that CM Punk is staying on Monday Night Raw. So we had a CM Punk champ pick up from the crowd. Logan Paul was like, oh, I have his number. So SmackDown then selected the Pride, Bobby Lashley, Montez Ford, Angel Dawkins, and B-Fab. I Show Speed announced My Night Raw is selecting the monster of all monsters, Braun Strowman. I completely forgot that Braun Strowman was still employed. Though it's been a while since he's been on TV. 
So then Logan Paul ended up announcing that SmackDown is selecting Tiffany Stratton. So Tiffany Stratton is staying on SmackDown. So no surprise with the second round of picks here. CM Punk staying on Monday Night Raw. The Pride staying on SmackDown. Braun Strowman, you know, on My Night Raw. I don't even remember if he was on My Night Raw before uh, he was out. And then Tiffany Stratton staying on SmackDown. And Michael Cole and uh, Pat McAfee end up mentioning that CM Punk was drafted before Drew McIntyre. That's a little uh, no thing to know. So then Logan Paul and I show speed, headed to the ring. Logan Paul ended up saying that he was here to make draft picks and hang out with Patrick Mahomes. He had saying now he hears Jay Uso has been running his mouth. He had saying that Damian Priest will beat Jay. He had saying that Jay made a mistake leaving the bloodline because he is incapable of winning on his own. So Logan Paul then got into the ring and he wanted to give a play by play. Of what will happen on Saturday at Backlash. So he got interrupted by Jey Uso. So Jey Uso headed to the ring. Crowd ended up giving Jay a big ovation. Everybody was doing the Jey Uso. So Jay got on the mic. He ended up saying that Logan Paul has a lot of predictions, but he wants to hear what the people have to say. So Jay then ended up asking the crowd there in Kansas City. If he can beat Damian Priest and win the World Heavyweight Championship. To which the crowd ended up popping for that. So Jay then ended up asking if he should beat up Logan Paul. To which the crowd ended up cheering for that as well. So Logan Paul ended up saying that Jay's been yeeted since 2017. He ended up saying, unlike him with his bloodline, he is tight with his. So Finn Balor and J.D. McDonough end up making their way to the ring. Logan Paul ended up saying that Jay is all alone again. So then Jay end up going after Balor and McDonough. And we had Logan Paul end up going to ringside. He ended up getting Patrick Mahomes Super Bowl rings. Of course, Patrick Mahomes has three Super Bowl rings. So Logan Paul ended up taking all three from Patrick Mahomes. Logan Paul ended up putting the rings on. He ended up getting in the ring to hit Jay. Jay ended up ducking. And McDonough ended up taking that shot with the Super Bowl rings from Logan Paul. So Balor and Logan Paul ended up looking down at McDonough. And it was funny. Jay Uso stood behind uh, McDonough and Logan Paul. He was just laughing at what happened. So... Jay then stood with uh, both, uh, you know, Logan Paul and Balor, and then he had taken Balor down. Logan Paul ended up joining the attack. He was taking out Jay, and then Braun Strowman headed to the ring. Braun Strowman came down. He ended up shoving Balor down, and he delivered a choke slam to Balor. Strowman then looked over at Logan Paul. Logan Paul backed up, and he had run away through the crowd. So, Strowman was mounting the way at Logan Paul. Strowman then turned, and he looked at Patrick Mahomes. So, we had two uh, Chiefs players end up preventing their quarterback. Jay ended up pulling Strowman back, and Strowman ended up posing for the crowd, and pretty much that was basically that. This was awful. This segment was awful. You know, it's happy to see Braun Strowman come back. So he hasn't been shown in a while. Then we saw Chad Gable. Chad Gable was talking with our truth. Gable ended up shaking hands with truth. Miz walked up and he had mentioned that he was told they're defending the World Tag Team Championship. So our truth ended up saying that he made a deal with Chad Gable. When they get one now and two later. So Miz ended up asking if R-Truth knows what is going on. 
So our truth ended up saying that they have an opportunity to get drafted by the NFL and the Chiefs. So this was funny. Our truth is just great. So Miz reminded Truth that this is the WWE draft. Our truth then realized he made a mistake in mentioning that, oh, we're going to get drafted by the NFL and the Chiefs. So the Miz ended up saying, maybe I could talk to Patrick Mahomes. And R2 was like, oh, I love the insurance guy. <laughs> he was confusing Patrick Mahomes with Peyton Manning. You know, Peyton Manning does the uh, nationwide, you know, commercials. So Gable ended up saying that R Truth is a great negotiator. So then all of a sudden, Chad Gable was struck in the face. And he was struck by Sami Zayn. You know, that was basically that. And then as Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, Kathy Kelly was backstage. She was with Booker T, two-time WWE. Hall of Famer. Of course, he, Booker T is the special draft analyst. So Booker T put over Jay Cargill as SmackDown's number one pick. He ended up saying that he wants to know what will happen to the Judgment Day. He ended up saying that CM Punk was big for Raw. So Drew McIntyre appeared behind Booker T. And Drew McIntyre was like to Booker T, tell me you did not just say that. Of course, he was referencing... You know, what Booker T used to say back in the day, you know, Booker T always used to say, tell me you did not just say that. So McIntyre ended up saying that CM Punk was in one match and got injured. He ended up saying that he injured Punk and won the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. Booker T ended up mentioning that Punk cost McIntyre the title at WrestleMania. McIntyre ended up saying that he cannot believe how Booker T has changed. He ended up saying that he was there with Booker T when Punk left and knows how he feels. So McIntyre was not happy that Booker T changed and he ended up walking off. And that was basically that. So Drew McIntyre, not a fan of Booker T saying that Punk was big for Monday Night Raw. Can't wait to see, you know, this Drew McIntyre and CM Punk match when it comes to be. Uh, Drew McIntyre uh, signed a new deal with WWE, so he will be staying with WWE. So good on McIntyre for, you know, for signing, for re-signing. And then we have Bronson Reed versus Sami Zayn. This is for the Intercontinental Championship. This was a okay match here. Match ended up getting on the way. We had Sami Zayn end up circling around uh, Bronson Reed. Sami Zayn applied a waist lock on Reed. Reed backed Sami up. Sami ended up avoiding uh, Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed quick, quickly ended up shoving uh, Sami Zayn away. Ended up charging for a shoulder tackle. He then headbutted Sami Zayn down. He ended up getting Sami Zayn to his feet and chopped away at Sami's chest. Reed started punching and headbutting Sammy. Reed ended up sending Sammy into the ropes, but Sammy Zayn held on. Bronson Reed ended up charging, but Sammy Zayn sent Reed through the ropes. Sammy Zayn ended up kicking Bronson Reed back. He had pinned a springboard moonsault block to the floor. Sammy then headed to the top rope. He dove off the top rope for a cross body, to which Bronson Reed caught Sammy Zayn. Reed ended up slamming Sammy Zayn into the corner. And then he had pinned a run of power slam. He had going for the cover. Sami Zayn kicked out. Reed quickly followed up with a Santon splash on Sami Zayn. And then Minot Raw went to commercial. Then when Minot Raw came back from the commercial, Bronson Reed was in control of the match. He started taking it to Sami Zayn. He whipped Sami into the ropes, but Sami springboarded over Reed and connected with a clothesline. Sami then elbowed Reed back. He ended up coming off the middle of the turnbuckle. But Reed caught Sammy with a Uranagi. Reed ended up going for the cover, and Sammy ended up kicking out. So Reed ended up hitting Sammy with a vicious turnbuckle power bomb, which was followed up by a sit out power bomb. So Reed ended up going for the cover, and Sammy ended up kicking out. 
So at the end of the match, Sami Zayn ended up hitting the Huluva kick out of nowhere to Reed. And as he was preparing to get the win, Chad Gable ended up attacking Sami Zayn with a German suplex, which that led the ref to call for the bell. So Sami Zayn won the match by disqualification. Of course, still the Intercontinental Champion. Of course, titles can't change on a disqualification. So post-match, Gable ended up taking it to Sami Zayn. He ended up applying the ankle lock. Gable then grapevine uh, Sami Zayn's leg and kinched in the ankle lock. Refs end up running down to break Chad Gable away. Chad Gable ended up relinquishing the ankle lock. Reed then ended up crushing Sami Zayn with the tsunami. Gable ended up going outside. He grabbed the Intercontinental Championship. Gable held up the title, but Reed ended up spinning Chad Gable around. He ended up pinning a Death Valley driver. Reed then ended up pulling up the Intercontinental Championship over Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. And pretty much that was basically that. So maybe are we going to get a triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship? You know, Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable versus uh, Bronson Reed? Maybe. I can see that is where they're going with this. And then we had round three of the draft as Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial. So, JBL and Ron Simmons, they end up coming out to announce the picks for round three. So, JBL end up announcing that Raw has selected the LWO, Rey Mysterio, Dragon Lee, Cruz del Toro, Walking Wilds, Lena Vega, and Carlito, which... Carlito is not going to be uh, in the LWO because he ended up turning on the LWO this past Friday on SmackDown. He was the one who attacked Dragon Lee backstage before WrestleMania. So Ron Simmons ended up announcing that SmackDown has selected Legal Del Fantasma, Escobar, Angel, Humberto, and Electra Lopez. JBL ended up announcing that Raw has selected Drew McIntyre. And Ron Simmons ended up uh, announcing the final pick of the third round. SmackDown selects Shinsuke Nakamura. So, there you go. Those were uh, the third round draft picks. And once again, not surprised by any of these. LWO going to Miami Night Raw. Legal Del Fantasma staying on SmackDown. Drew McIntyre staying on Miami Night Raw. Shinsuke Nakamura. Going to SmackDown. Not surprised. And this led to Drew McIntyre coming out. Drew McIntyre was not happy. He kept asking if he's the only sane and logical person left. He kept saying that there's not one person in the arena that could say it makes sense, considering that he got drafted in round three. So CM Punk chant ended up picking up. McIntyre ended up saying that Punk is the first thing from anti-establishment, and that he's a corporate ass-kisser. So, Punk ended up, he ended up saying that Punk did accomplish something. He hurt McIntyre. He ended up saying that when he attacked him from behind at WrestleMania, Punk fractured his elbow. So McIntyre ended up saying, unlike Punk, who was staying at home and collecting a paycheck, he tapes it up and gets on with it. So then CM Punk's music end up hitting. McIntyre started pacing on a stage. He was looking for Punk to see if he would come out. So CM Punk was shown in a luxury box. Punk ended up getting on the mic. He ended up saying that he's not sitting at home. He ended up saying to McIntyre, I'm right here, you little bitch. So McIntyre was irate. He headed backstage to make his way to the luxury box. Ron Simmons then looked around. He ended up shaking his head, and he ended up saying nothing. So Ron Simmons then ended up saying his famous line, Damn! And pretty much that was that. And then we had Maxine Dupree. Maxine Dupree was backstage with Otis and Akira Tozawa. Chad Gable ended up coming in. Maxine ended up saying that she eliminated two people in the Battle Royal. And has some momentum. 
Chad Gable ended up asking to see uh, Dupree's belt before saying he doesn't celebrate mediocrity. He ended up saying that Otis and Tozawa better shape up and win him a championship. Gable ended up saying that he doesn't want to see Tozawa dancing. So Gable ended up storming off. Ivy Nile walked in. She ended up pulling Maxine Dupree away. And that was basically that. And then we saw Kathy Kelly as Mighty Night Raw came back on the commercial. She was backstage with Braun Breaker. Of course, Braun Breaker was drafted to, Smack, to uh, Mighty Night Raw on SmackDown this past Friday. Braun Breaker ended up saying to Kathy Kelly that Adam Pierce knows he is the best possible pick for Mighty Night Raw. And that he's ready to take this place over. Sheamus then came up to Braun Breaker. Sheamus ended up saying to Braun Breaker that he's a big fan. He ended up saying that Breaker reminds him of a young, hungry him, having banger after banger after banger. And that was when Drew McIntyre ends up charging past both Sheamus and Braun Breaker. You know, McIntyre looking for Punk in the luxury box. And then we had Cancer Ray versus Maxine Dupree. Cancer Ray was accompanied by Indy Hartwell. Maxine was accompanied by Ivy Nile. This was awful. Absolutely awful. You had Maxine doing that awful reverse Caterpillar elbow drop on Candice, which Otis does the Caterpillar elbow drop better. And Cancel Ray won the match. Wicked stepmother on Maxine Dupree. Awful. Moving on. Kathy Kelly. She was backstage with the LWO. Kathy Kelly ended up asking Rey Mysterio about Carlito's betrayal, which we saw this past Friday on SmackDown. Rey ended up telling Kathy Kelly that he has mixed emotions and that the LWO are happy to be on Raw. Rey ended up saying that he has unfinished business with Carlito. So then Rey's estranged son, Dominic, ended up coming up to him. Dominic ended up calling his father a geezer. And reminds him that Judgment Day runs raw. So Ray ended up saying that Judgment Day hasn't even been drafted yet. And he then called Dominic Dirty Sanchez because of the mustache that Dominic has, which mustache looks awful. So Dominic ended up saying that he's lucky that he's not cleared. Of course, Dominic dealing with a arm injury. Oh. That was basically that. So then we saw Drew McIntyre. He was pacing around the luxury boxes looking for CM Punk. McIntyre ended up finding the luxury box that CM Punk was in. So he went into it. Drew McIntyre ended up finding an autographed picture of CM Punk. So Punk's music ended up hidden. He made his way out. And Drew McIntyre was watching from the luxury box furious. Punk ended up heading into the ring. He ended up getting on the mic. He ended up saying that he loves Kansas, Kansas City and the people that inhabit it. Punk ended up saying that he doesn't want to waste their time like Drew McIntyre. He ended up saying that he'll try to do this in less time than McIntyre was the world champion. So he had 5 minutes and 46 seconds. And Punk was like to Pat McAfee, oh you could time me. Punk then ended up sitting down. He ended up saying that he normally asks if he has McIntyre's attention now. But he's had McIntyre's attention for some time. He ended up saying that McIntyre is like an ex-girlfriend he can't get rid of. And he ended up saying that if Punk hurt McIntyre's elbow, he ended up saying good. So Punk ended up saying that McIntyre prayed to hurt Punk. And Punk did that to him. Punk ended up saying that he thought he hurt the elbow while tweeting, and that's why he was drafted higher than McIntyre. Punk ended up saying that he isn't out for revenge. McIntyre has given him purpose. So Punk ended up saying that the reason he was drafted before McIntyre is because he is the best in the world in the ring, and on the mic, and on commentary, to which he was like, no disrespect to them, no disrespect to you, Pat, no disrespect, no disrespect to you, Michael. So he ended up saying, losers hope things happen. Losers 
pray for things to happen. Winners make it happen. Punk ended up saying that when he's cleared and 100%, he'll make McIntyre's life a living hell. So pretty much that was basically uh, Punk's promo here. But very good promo this was from Punk. You know, Punk and McIntyre is the only, you know, good thing to look forward to on My Night Raw here. And Punk, you know, is looking, you know, a lot healthier. And I have to say, they're doing a good job keeping Punk uh, in the mix here with McIntyre as, you know, he's on the way to recovering. And I guess they're going to be setting this up for SummerSlam. I think at SummerSlam, we're going to be getting Punk versus McIntyre, which, you know, that is good, you know, to be put on the SummerSlam card. And then we had the Lunger Blaze and Theodore Long, Teddy Long. Holla, 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 player. They end up heading to the podium for round four of the draft. So CM Punk end up embracing both the Lunger Blaze and Teddy Long, and they then head to the back. So Teddy Long announced the picks for Raw. The Lunger Blaze end up announcing the picks for SmackDown. So Teddy Long end up announcing that Raw has selected the Judgment Day. Of course, this consists of Balor, Dominic, and J.D. McDonough. Of course, Rhea Ripley, you know, no longer... A part of that. Because she's injured. So I guess Rhea Ripley is now a free agent. You know when she comes back. So Judgment Day are staying on Monday Night Raw. Alundra Blaze. End up announcing that Smackdown has selected Naomi. So she's staying on Smackdown. Then Theo Long end up announcing that Raw has selected another NXT superstar. And... That superstar is Ilya Dragunov. So Ilya Dragunov is coming to My Night Raw. Really like Ilya Dragunov. He's very good in the ring. Brings, you know, entertaining matches. You know, if you uh, watch his matches down in NXT, he is just absolutely great in the ring. It's going to be good to see uh, him a part of the My Night Raw roster, which I called that... Dragunov was going to go to Monday Night Raw in the draft. I couldn't uh, sense him being on SmackDown. I think Monday Night Raw was the best for Dragunov. So I'm glad that, you know, he's a part of the uh, Monday Night Raw roster. Of course, everybody in there in the NXT arena were celebrating, you know, with Ilya Dragunov. And Shawn Michaels ended up coming over to Dragunov, gave him a hug. And gave him his Monday Night Raw hat. And then, back in the arena, Alundra Blaze ended up announcing that SmackDown has selected Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. To which Adam Pearce was happy about that, which I'll get to, you know, later. But yeah, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven going to SmackDown. So, those were your... Fourth round draft picks. Judgment Day staying on Monday Night Raw, not surprised. Naomi staying on SmackDown, not surprised. Ilya Dragunov was the surprise for me here in uh, the fourth round. But even though I knew Dragunov was, you know, going to Monday Night Raw, still, you know, it was, you know, kind of a surprise for me. And then Chelsea Green and Piper Niven going to SmackDown, not surprised. And then we had Liv Morgan versus Nia Jax. Boring. Nia Jax ended up throwing Liv Morgan down twice after the bell rang. Nia Jax ended up show tackling uh, Liv Morgan, ended up driving her knee into the canvas. Liv Morgan ended up getting up in the corner. Nia Jax ended up avalanching Liv Morgan. Nia Jax ended up holding Liv Morgan's body up, started taunting the crowd. She ended up throwing Liv Morgan across the ring. Morgan ended up coming back with some kicks to Nia Jax's legs. And she ended up delivering a step up in Siguri. Liv Morgan ended up drop kicking Nia Jax in her knee. And she ended up drop kicking Nia Jax in her chest to take her down. Liv Morgan ended up drop kicking uh, Nia Jax throw first into the ropes. 
and then she ended up hitting a running back elbow in the corner. Liv Morgan ended up hitting that again, and Nia Jax ended up popping out of the corner with a clothesline. Nia Jax ended up pulling Liv Morgan over to the corner, climbed to the second rope, but Liv Morgan ended up getting up. Liv Morgan then ended up attacking Nia Jax's legs, and she ended up driving Nia, Nia Jax down into the canvas. Nia Jax ended up rolling out of the ring to recover. Liv Morgan ended up going for a baseball slide, but Nia Jax ended up catching Liv Morgan, slammed her onto the commentary table. And then it cut to Tiffany Stratton sitting at ringside watching Nia Jax. So then Monday Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, Nia Jax ended up applying a rare chin lock to Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan ended up fighting up, but Nia Jax ended up sending Liv Morgan to the corner. Nia Jax ended up charging, but she ended up hitting the ring post when Liv Morgan ended up moving out of the way. Liv Morgan ended up getting on the apron and drop kicked Nia Jax's head into the ring post. We had Liv Morgan climbing the ropes. Nia Jax ended up pulling Liv Morgan down. Ended up delivering the Samoan drop to Liv Morgan. She ended up going for the cover. Liv Morgan ended up kicking out. So in the end, Naomi ended up attacking Tiffany Stratton from behind. Stratton and Naomi ended up wrong at ringside. Naomi ended up getting on the apron. She ended up kicking Stratton down. Nia Jax end up knocking Naomi off the apron. Liv Morgan then end up hitting the springboard code breaker on Nia Jax and then hit the oblivion. So Liv Morgan end up going for the cover. And there you go. Liv Morgan ended up winning the match. Overall, match was boring, in my opinion. And then we had Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly was backstage with Booker T., Booker T end up saying that he wants to know who is next. Is it Trick Williams, Roxanne Perez? He ended up saying that he is happy about Ilya Dragunov. So then Kathy Kelly saw Adam Pierce. Pierce ended up saying to Kathy Kelly that the picks you don't make stick with you. And so he starts celebrating Chelsea Green's departure from Monday Night Raw. So Adam Pierce is all happy that he doesn't have to deal with Chelsea Green anymore. So Pierce ended up saying that he has more picks to make. So pretty much that was that. And then we had round five of the draft. We had the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray, and Devon Dudley. WWE Hall of Famers. They ended up making their way out. And when they came out, they bought a table out. And they set up the table. We had a ECW chant end up picking up. Bubba Ray Dudley end up greeting Kansas City. And he end up wanting to know if they want to have fun with the Dudley boys. So they end up saying, what's up? So Bubba end up telling Devon to get the tables. To which Devon end up shouting, oh, my brother testify. So Bubba end up announcing that Raw's first pick's in the fifth round are Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods of the New Day. So New Day staying on Monday Night Raw. Devon ends up announcing that SmackDown is keeping pretty deadly. Great. Fucking great. Bubba Ray ends up announcing another NXT selection. And coming to Monday Night Raw from NXT is Lyra. Valkyria. So Lyra Valkyria is coming to Monday Night Raw. Lyra Valkyria was the one that defeated Becky Lynch for the NXT Women's Championship. So good to see Lyra Valkyria coming up to Monday Night Raw. Everybody embraced her. Shawn Michaels even embraced uh, Lyra Valkyria. And then Devon ended up announcing that SmackDown is selecting Cancel Ray and Indy Hartwell. So those are your fifth round draft picks. And then we had Awesome Truth, The Miz and Our Truth versus the Alpha Academy, Otis and Akira Tozawa. This is for the World Tag Team Championship. Obviously, uh, we all knew where this was going to go. 
this was a quick match. So, Awesome Truth end up winning the match. They retain the World Tag Team Championship. That was that. Myth and R Truth end up in the Truth Crushing Finale. Moving on. Dominic Mysterio. We saw him. He was not happy that they fell to the fourth round, you know, the Judgment Day. David Priest ended up saying that it's no surprise. Every time they try to help him, they fail miserably. Priest ended up saying that he doesn't need them to beat Jey Uso. So Priest ended up telling them to focus on the team. That was that. I don't see Judgment Day sticking around any longer. I think that they might be on their last legs. And then we saw Liv Morgan walking backstage. Becky Lynch ended up approaching Liv Morgan, ended up congratulating her on the win. Becky Lynch ended up saying that she's got a title shot. You know, Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan nodded, and she ended up walking off. Damage Control walked up to Becky Lynch, and they ended up saying that they'll be seeing her on Raw. So there you go, that was that. And then we had the last round, round six of the draft. So we had Adam Pierce and Nick Aldis. They were going to announce the final picks. So Adam Pierce ended up saying that Raw picks up the final testament. Karrion Cross, Orders of Pain, Paul Ellering, and Scarlet. So the final testament will be on My Night Raw. Nick Aldis. Ended up saying that SmackDown selects Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Argato. DIY. So DIY will be on SmackDown. And it appears set up announcing that Raw's final pick will be Bronson Reed. So Bronson Reed is staying on My Night Raw. Nick Aldis ended up saying that SmackDown's final pick sees them getting an NXT superstar. And that NXT superstar is Blair Davenport. So Blair Davenport is on SmackDown. She got up from her seat. Everybody embraced Blair Davenport down there. Even Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels end up handing Blair her SmackDown hat. Very happy for Blair Davenport. You know, Blair Davenport, you know, she is you know, decent in the ring. So can't wait to see what she's going to do on SmackDown. Same for Lyra Valkyria, you know, going to uh, Monday Night Raw. Lyra Valkyria, she is, you know, pretty good. Main event, six-man tag. Jey Uso, Ricochet, and Andrade versus The Judgment Day. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and Jada McDonough. And this was a decent match here. Balor and Andrade end up starting off the match. Both Balor and Andrade end up locking up. Balor end up getting Andrade in the corner. He ended up delivering some shoulders to Andrade's midsection. Balor connected with a headlock takeover on Andrade. He kinched in the headlock. Andrade ended up fighting up. He ended up whipping Balor off. Andrade left frog Balor. Balor ended up grabbing Andrade and sending him into the ropes. Andrade tied himself up on the ropes and ended up sending Balor out of the ring. Andrade ended up sending McDonough over the top rope. Ricochet ended up taking in. Andrade and Ricochet end up double clothesline Priest over the top rope. So Ricochet and Andrade end up taking out Balor and McDonough with suicide dives. Jay then ended up hitting Priest with a suicide dive that sent him over the commentary table. And then My Night Raw went to commercial. Then when My Night Raw came back from the commercial, Priest was taking it to Ricochet. Priest ended up having Ricochet in the surfboard stretch, but Ricochet ended up fighting up. Priest ended up quickly taking uh, Ricochet down with a broken arrow. And he ended up going for the cover, to which Ricochet ended up kicking out. So Priest ended up waiting for Ricochet to get up. He started kicking away at Ricochet. Priest ended up leveling Ricochet with a right hand. He then surprised Jey Uso with a kick to his skull. So Balor ended up taking in. He started stomping on Ricochet. McDonough ended up taking in. He ended up hitting Ricochet with a moonsault. Balor then tagged in. As did Priest. 
Valen Priest went at it. Dana pinned a backbreaker leg drop combo. But Andrade ended up breaking up the pin. Priest ended up grabbing Andrade, sent him into the ring post, shoulder first. McDonough then ended up grabbing Ricochet, but Ricochet ended up catching McDonough with a recoil. So at the end of the match, Jay ended up pinning Balor with a spear. He connected with an Uso splash on Balor. So we had Priest on the apron. We had Jay end up going for the cover on Balor. And there you go. Jay Uso, Ricochet, and Andrade ended up winning the match. Overall, decent match it was. But overall, Minot Raw, just a dreadful show this was in the draft this year was absolutely terrible. 95% of the uh, superstars are staying on their brands with about 50% getting drafted. But dreadful. Dreadful show this was for My Night Raw tonight. But anyways, that's it for the My Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And I will see you all on Wednesday for AW Dynamite. So see you all Wednesday night.